Okay, essentially with this system is you are extracting leads from LinkedIn, okay? So using LinkedIn Sales Navigator, I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar. If you're not familiar, it's very easy to set up. What you will do is, is utilize the search filters to narrow it down for what industry you're doing. So for this test that I have here, well, first let me give you a rundown. You're going from LinkedIn Sales Navigator, you're getting the CSV file with Phantom Buster, okay? Then once you have the Google Sheet, I have one right here. Uh, this is, I was uh, scraping AI automation agencies. So here are all the ones. So once you scrape and you use Phantom Buster and you have the leads here in the Google Sheet file, you can have two different make scenarios, okay? One of them is to take the, uh, the Google Sheet Format the name, clean them up, and find the emails. Because the thing with LinkedIn Sales Navigator, you don't always get the emails. Now, a lot of times, if you're doing this very specifically, you, uh, the Sales QL Chrome extension, you could use any mail finder Chrome extension as well. Uh, how do I get rid of this? And, but uh, to do it on a large scale, you know, when you're looking at 1,000, 1,500 or so different lead scrapes, this will send to any mail finder. Your second make scenario. Waiting for this to load. Is to receive the emails from instantly using a webhook. So you're sending it from one make scenario to another. Then an icebreaker, because we're personalizing these emails, will get generated. And you give us some examples of how it should look like based off of this is what their LinkedIn company info looks like, this is what the LinkedIn data looks like. This is what an icebreaker should look like based off of mentioning and something personalized in their description, their company data, their personal data of what they do, right? Then that HTTP request is really set up with instantly. Let me put up instantly. It gets sent to instantly so you can have your campaigns. So you can send out the emails. This isn't loading. So here I got uh, 370 leads. So I've already done this, but I'm going to do it right now live with you guys because I do have some more leads that I want to do. So the thing with this is to remember, there's a few things with make that I've came into issues with. One is how much it goes down the row, meaning your Google Sheet, right? You said you got a thousand leads. You can't just run it once and just have it continue. You'll come into some issues with GPT, making the icebreakers. You'll come into some issues as well that the make scenario itself is, you know, like after a certain amount of minutes, 45 minutes, whatever, it just won't run the same. Hence why we have two different scenarios with the webhook that's being sent there. Excuse me. Green tea with uh, ginger and honey. That's a life hack right there. Okay. So that's why, that's one of the reasons we have the two scenarios. And what I like to do is just to keep it a little bit more organized and not come across any issues is on the Google scenario here, I'll put, for example, like I tried 115 for it to go down 115 rows. That came into some issues. So then I kept it around 70 to 80. A lot of times there's the amount of tokens that GPT can initiate in a certain amount of time. And it'll say like it needs a break. Basically, it'll give you like a little warning that to, to wait a little bit. So I've tested between 75 to 85. So let's say you do 75 rows at a time, right? The only thing I haven't figured out is, for example, it goes down in uh, descending order, right? In your Google Sheet. And as it's going down, once it does the first 75, like you put, okay, do 75 rows. It doesn't know that it did those 75 to now go to the next 75. I haven't figured that out. So the only part of this that's manual is I'll come down and I'll like highlight, let's say we do the first 75 rows after that's whole finished and the leads are uploaded into instantly, I go highlight, I delete those 75 rows and I'll re-upload them into a used AI lead. These are the ones that we've gone through. We've generated because remember, any email finder, not all emails will be found. That's another thing. Email finder, for example, I have 370 leads started with a thousand credits. That's 753 credits I have left. So for every email that finds, it's one credit. However, 
753 out of a thousand i didn't it didn't generate one credit for the 370 leads because only when it's like really certain that that's the email it'll uh, spend one credit so this is good so i would say it's about 50 to 60 percent and they say about 60 to 70 or i think 60 to be on the safe side but for the amount that i've done so far i'm looking at around 50 to 60 percent of the email that it's found from the leads that i've generated which is fine uh you want to you could always go back and use sales ql or something else to find the emails but you're still going to get a decent amount of emails found from the from the amount of leads you scraped off of linkedin so let me go here so i have a second lead list this is uh, i have 1700 total so this is 700 to 1700 okay so with this right here we have this set up so let me guys show you this so you connect your google sheet file you select the folder uh, descending we're going to put 15 rows just to give you a small test right now to take a look at then gpt formats the name because some of those names when it's going to send to any email to find it's got emojis and random shit in, in the in the linkedin so you just wanted to tell it like give it an example as a user okay it's got this name with this emoji now show it with just the name so it learns to erase the emojis remove emojis fix capitalization to really only output the name then we have it uh what's it called uh, a tools to replace the new lines have it just the full name replace any spaces any quotes uh, so that way it's cleaned up then you use your anymail api i should probably blur that in a second <laughs> when I when I uh, post this but you then put that you wanted to send uh, the company name the full name what you're selecting from the GPT you're putting in the title the summary the title description the company location and the person location to send that to then find the emails okay then in your second make scenario that webhook is to catch the first scenario which is very simple to make. You just add the link from before. And then, like I said, you're using an icebreaker prompt. You could use it, you know, however you want. That GPT prompt specifically, this is just dedicated to personalizing the emails. So we want a personalized icebreaker. And again, the main thing here is to give it the examples. Show it what the output is supposed to look like. I'm oh, sorry, the input is the full name, the company name, the title, the summary the description. And then show what the icebreaker is supposed to look like. And then JSON is simply just cleaning up that result. So it's a clear text that then when it sends to instantly, I'll show you here, what you'll get is, oh, hey, Edwin, your work at Precision AI Solutions is incredible, especially the Oncology Copilot project. As someone who's passionate about AI and healthcare, figured I'd reach out. So there's your personalized email that's in instantly that is ready to then pop into a campaign. What you do then is your campaign will have depending on what offer, what you're trying to outreach for, you put in first name, the subject, what your icebreaker is, then the rest of the body of your first email, and then you can set up your second and third email, and then it'll input what that icebreaker is. Icebreaker goes into that spot in your campaign with the rest of the body of the email, whatever the offer is. So the idea of that personalization is just to make whatever body, whatever offer, whatever you're trying to sell, or whatever you're trying to do in your emails, just be a bit more personalized with the icebreaker. So that way it just sinks, it, it just attaches on top of each other, and then you can send them out. So let's run this. Come back here. We have the first 15. Yeah. And I'll show you. All right. So it's running. Find the email. So once that's run once, then hop into my second scenario. It doesn't necessarily take all the ones from the first scenario. Sometimes you have to run it twice. It's happened to me a couple of times. So here it didn't happen. But sometimes when I do 70, uh, it is running over the 15. Mm, probably because there was data backed up in the queue because I was running a different list. So sometimes what happens is, uh, you'll, I'll show you in a second, but there'll be like a queue of data that's been like backed up or built up. And it has to go through those first. Sometimes you can erase that if you're having any issues. So... 
The good thing is, however, it won't duplicate the leads in Italy. So let's say you're running the first 70 rows, right? And let's say you were to run it again because you had issues. Whatever mail email you found and whatever lead that gets punched instantly, it's not going to be duplicated again. So I'll come here, refresh instantly. We had 370, right? Now we have 374. So I found four emails. And then if we go back to uh, an email here, 749. So you can see it took some of those credits. Now we're going to go back, run this again. So now it's cleared the backup data. Take the most recent one and finish. Okay. Let's refresh instantly again. 374, 375. So we got five. Kind, that's okay. It's kind of trash. But now we'll run it again. But just to make sure, what we'll do is come back to, you go on webhooks. Q. Okay, no data. All right, that's good. Okay, so I ran through everything. Come back to scenario. Now we'll run this again. But we'll do 70 rows. So many five. Let's make it odd. I like odd numbers. Okay. Run once. And we're off. <sighs> Let me check if this thing is still recording. Oh, splendid. I got nervous that I was just talking into nothing. 55. Almost there. Okay. Now hop into the second scenario and run the i added two resume functions into this because what you might see happen is that oh if it doesn't find the email like let's say it's going on the rows and for one it doesn't find the email it'll just stop you want it to continue so you just keep it you put a resume that way it just even if it does get the error it just continues to function so let's say it's going down. Okay, it didn't find three emails. That's cool. Still send it, get the icebreaker. Okay, it doesn't find the, um, what's it called? The ones that do have the email can still go through, get the icebreaker made, and still get punched out to instantly. The only thing I would add to this automation is depending on how picky you are or what your exact goals are, is that the ones it doesn't find the email for, still create an icebreaker for and save it to a separate file, save it to a separate Google Sheet. That way you can still go back later using a different platform, um, a different email finder, and you can still reach out to those leads if you choose to. But this is just a very uh, quick, straightforward way to get a bunch of leads and start outreaching. You could do this for yourself if you have something specifically that you're trying to sell, or let's say you are in charge of a campaign for a SaaS company or whatnot, and your goal is to you know, try to get more demos, try to get more calls booked and whatnot. So it did 70 out of the 75. I see, I said that it might happen. We'll refresh. So we got 375 leads here and instantly. I'll refresh. Now we got 401. So I'm going to run this again. Just in case to make sure it extracts and juices all the leads before. Okay, it was completed. Refresh this. 403. So I got two, we got two more leads in here. So now you kind of see how this can work. So where'd it go? We did 70, the first 75 rows, right? Okay, I want to do this again for another 75 rows, but I don't want it to run through the 75 we just ran through, right? So this is what I do. Hold on. Wait, ooh, went past. 75 and we'll paste in the used one and I can scrape this one or clean it up 
um, again, based off the ones that emails weren't founded from, and then find them somewhere else once I exhaust this campaign. So now we've like basically bumped up our list, right? Come here. What is this? 75 rows. Okay. Run it. Dun, 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 dun. We're more than halfway there. That's good. Hey, it was literally just like sunny, sunny, hot outside. Now it's pouring rain. That's Florida for you. In the hurricane season. Okay, 75. Run the second scenario. And while this is running, like, we literally can come back here and instantly, like, we got 403 leads. Refresh it. 413. So, while it's still running, you know, we've, got, we've had 10 leads added in here. I do recommend if you're going to use instant leads to use the hyper growth program. Okay. Refresh. We had 413. We had 403. We added 10. Now we're at 438. So, from 403, so 35 out of 64 yeah a little bit more than 50 percent excuse me of finding the emails because the specific http request is if it meets that criteria if it has the email it's got everything else then sent instantly i'm gonna hit run once again to make sure it picks up all the other data from the first scenario make sure it goes through all the rows Four thirty-eight, four forty-two. So we got six more leads in here. Run once again just to make sure. Okay. So basically, yes. Oh dang, twenty minutes. I don't want to make this longer than it needs to be. So yes, this is how you can automate your cold email outreach. This is essentially using, you know, like I said, link to sales navigator. Use Phantom Buster to get the CSV file. That's not hard to do. Um, I don't necessarily think I need to go into that here, but wherever your leads came from, wherever you scraped them from, however you did it, um, if you're not using instantly, let's say you're using a smart lead or something else, you're still making the HTTP request and linking the API for whatever you're using and you're just adding it into make. So it's the same methodology applied. You saw me use a Google sheet, how you organize that, where you get it. Like, obviously I'll show you here when you get it from LinkedIn, and the Phantom Buster, you know, the profile, the full name, the first name, the last name. So that might change, right, depending on how you organize your leads on Google Sheets and depending on how you scrape them. But whatever criteria you have up here, your first name, last name, company name, the summary, the title description, when you're pasting that into GPT and the tools, like what I wanted to pick it up from, whatever description, like let's say you have a different word, let's say you don't have description, you have bio, you're just picking the same thing and you're just adding that. So that's essentially how the process gets done. You know what I mean? Like when you're putting it to format the full name, right? And let's say you don't have full name. You have first, last name. You're still picking that message content when you're on, uh, when you're on make. See right here, full name, first name, last name. So whatever uh, labels that you put into your rows, whatever criteria you put, you're still going to be selecting those things and directing it to format the names and construct the icebreakers off of the company, the summary, the description, whatever, whatever you're using, whatever you have. For me, it's just with LinkedIn, it's a lot easier to do that. If you're not, let's say you scraped them manually or did it some other way, and you just have like their name, their company, and location, but you don't necessarily have any information to craft an icebreaker, you might have to do that manually, have a VA, like let's say you're doing it off of Instagram, and you're just scraping off of Instagram, looking at the post, uh, let's say you are doing it off of Twitter, for example. That you could use Drippy for. The, the Drippy system, drippy.ai, what you can do is craft your lead list off of other pages that you are looking into who they're following or their followers are. You want a similar audience, and you could do that. 
and then get people and then put in other filters afterwards to narrow that list down depending on what niche you're targeting and crafting the icebreakers like you can direct it in drippy like i want a one sentence on one two and three about them but it could use their pin post it could use other posts that they have and whatnot their what's it called their bio the, the profile header it could use that information so let's say you were only going to do this manually and you're having a, a 40 to 100 targeted list right and you're doing your own research having a va go in personalize look at their company look at the stock that is through their socials craft write something summary and description then you can do the same thing here upload that google sheet craft 50 icebreakers off of that but at least you save your time on the icebreakers and you have the va do the personalization depending if you're you know trying to make very specific cold emails and calls you are always going to lose a little bit of touch and personalization the bigger the list the bigger the outreach campaign that you're trying to run naturally by definition however you can still maintain a decent balance of personalizations with mass outreach depending on what your goals are so anyway hope that provided some insights and some creativity and some direction into what you can do if you want the template for this uh i'm going to do i don't know how to how to release it uh i think i export the blue yeah export the blueprints and I'll set this up. I want to make a, either a newsletter or a telegram. Let me know in the comments below if you'd love to be part of a newsletter with thoughts that I share regarding to this and this journey on this AI automation shit, right? Or you'd prefer telegram messages. I love using telegram. I actually use a content automation with telegram where I send voice notes on telegram to myself that gets transcribed and gets punched out into a video script. So if you want to see um, a video on that, I just made a video that goes in depth and shows it live of me doing it and showing you the video scripts and how everything comes out. Uh, I'll also be showing, I'll also be posting a video soon of me doing it live. Also, the automation, getting the video script, pasting it into CapCut, you know, teleprompter and recording a video and showing you how to punch out content. If that's also your niche and your area is trying to make more content for yourself or for clients. So anyway, hope this made sense. Hope this provided some inspiration and whatnot. Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate your time. I felt like there was something else important I was supposed to share with this automation. Fuck it, never mind.